The principle of crisis comes from a, an old saying, and it's that there are two great motivators in life, inspiration and desperation. So inspiration first, what would the idea of inspiration would be? Inspiration would be when you are operating at a really high level in some part of your life. That can be your health, that can be your uh, mental well-being, your spiritual well-being, uh, financial well-being, and you see somebody who you admire or who you respect or who you love personally go through some kind of a transformation process and you say, wow, that was absolutely amazing. I want to see that myself. And so then you go down that path. Inspiration. Now that, as awesome as it is, when it comes to matters of health, that's not the way that it happens for most people. Most people, unfortunately, it seems to be more of the desperation variety. So what happens? We start life and we start to experience a few little bits and issues. Oftentimes it's in our teens or early 20s and the joke is, ha ha ha, it's because you're getting older. Um, not necessarily, because even though we're still young, there's still plenty of things that can go wrong in terms of our uh, physical, chemical, mental, emotional states of well-being that manifest in our body even at that age. And we confuse it for getting older when really what it is is it's the accumulation of all that stuff that's been amassing over months, years, or even at that age, decades. And so where does it typically start? It typically starts where we feel a bit more stress, where we feel a bit more tired, where we say, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just not feeling myself. I'm having one of those days. I'm having one of those weeks. I'm having one of those months. I'm having one of those years. You, you get the idea there. But then if we ignore it, no, 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 carry on, soldier on, it'll be right. Then it gets to the point where we start to experience a few different kinds of symptomatology. And I will use the example of, let's say that a, a little child wants to get, uh, you know, it's mom's attention. It's going to say something, mom, 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 and just keep getting louder and louder and louder and louder until mom eventually just simply put can't ignore that anymore. That seems to be more what actually happens in terms of our body and our physiology. The first thing that's affected at the lowest level is that we can't tangibly put our finger on it, but we're just not feeling our very best here today. The next level, if we let it get to that far, which most of the time it is, it starts to affect some of our daily function. It's not really stopping us from doing anything, but there are certain things in the day-to-day -day that are a little harder than they used to be. It's a little harder to get out of bed in the morning. We can't do quite as much physical activity as we did before, before we fatigue. We start to feel little aches or pains and groans and moans in our body that again, we attribute to getting older, but that's not necessarily it. Then we actually start to experience a few symptoms that are a bit more unpleasant, but the body seems to take care of them most of the time on its own until it comes to the point where what is happening to us is screaming so loud that we cannot ignore it anymore. That is what we're referring to in terms of crisis. And that, unfortunately, is that point where most people take action. Why do I say unfortunate? It's not unfortunate that they took action. It's unfortunate that it took so long. So as a consequence, an issue by the time that it reaches crisis points, because our bodies are designed to win, they are designed to be strong, it's usually taken months, years, or even decades for them to get to that point. And as a consequence, it's going to take longer and there's gonna be more work involved in order to ultimately restore that health to that previous level. Up until a person's last breath, your body never forgets how to heal itself and will continue to do so until the absolute very end. Caveat being is that if it also has to contend with past injury because we've let things go for too long, it's gonna take longer. There's again gonna be greater cost, greater time, greater stress, greater all of those kinds of things there that are going to be involved. So can healing happen? Yes, absolutely. In crisis, it's better than nothing, but far better simply point and this is in particular for the people who maybe you've gone through crisis before and you find yourself now on the mend and going up on the other side is that if you've had an experience like that you would know okay no I do not want the other people in my life to have to go through that and so important then that they understand that if they're still in those early phases of something's not quite right but I can't put my finger on it 
that is actually the ideal time to have things looked at. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If we can catch these things in their infancy, it gives us that opportunity to make the correction, restore the, uh, restore the normal function of the body, remove the interference, so that a person never has to go down that same kind of path. If we as a culture, if we as a society can learn to make that switch in terms of our thinking and our ways of looking at the body and taking better care of ourselves, I really do believe that we can make such a positive difference for generations of people being to come where we and our children and our grandchildren have that potential to be much healthier and in a much better place even than we are today.